I don't know, like, if this is going to freeze or not, because my computer these days, it's, like, really some time-ish. I made a video yesterday, and when I played it back, it was just, it's terrible. <laughs> so, hopefully, this video is okay. And I'm making this video because, I don't know, I've just been, sorry, I'm looking at the camera, I've just been thinking that I miss um, connection. And I miss talking with people kind of intimately about experiences. Because I know like a lot of the times my strongest um, relationships with people are when they're talking about talking to me about stuff that they've been through and I'm there to support them and like maybe reflect. Almost like a therapist but I feel... Um, I've been to a couple of counselling sessions in the past and the one thing that I don't like but I understand why they have to be that way is that sometimes when you go and speak to a counsellor it seems like you're speaking to a brick wall because they're trained to not be empathic and they have a wall up and like it kind of annoyed me really. <laughs> I know me a lot because I'm very empathic and if I'm speaking to somebody and obviously I don't want you to burst into tears with me but if I feel like I'm a feely person so I'm very sensual if I feel like you're not really connecting with me or you can't feel what I'm saying then it's like there is no therapy because that's what I need. It's not just an opportunity to express myself and get it out. It's an opportunity to connect to like I know it's hard to explain. Almost like share the lows kind of sounds a bit negative, but just to know that somebody understands and you know if you don't go through something it's hard to understand, but if someone has empathy, empathy is feeling something, what someone else is going through, so if the person was empathic, then it would feel better, because it feels like, okay, they've actually took in what I'm saying, and they get me, so I'm just sitting here in my living room, and I was just craving, like, I feel like I wanted to have an intimate moment, and an intimate conversation about just, um, a little bit of my upbringing and the way I am what I am, the way I am, what now, the reason why I think I am the way I am and I've been reading a lot about myself and on the last video I made I was talking about anxiety and insecurity but I've been doing a lot of like, research, okay, like, why are people, why, where does anxiety come from? Like, there's not just one answer, and what, what makes people feel insecure? And it's crazy how much, so much things link back to childhood, link back to childhood experiences. And especially if um, a person's been criticised a lot growing up, like, I'm not going to lie, like, I sometimes struggle with... Fear, like fear of not just rejection, but just fear of criticism. Like I've got this habit where I like to read. I like to read in between lines. Like the work. Like one thing I don't want to be is insulted. And it's like, just for an example, if I'm around somebody's house, <laughs> this sounds a bit crazy now. Don't judge me. If I'm around somebody's house and like they yawn, I've got my shoes, coat, bag, phone ready to go because I'm reading into it thinking okay they're yawning they're tired that's a hint for me to go I don't want to have to be in a position where a person has to turn to me and say hmm it's time for you to go home <laughs> like I don't want to give someone that reason no some of I feel someone doesn't like me that much I don't want them to have to insult me for me to go and leave them alone or even if, like, I romantically like somebody and I feel that they're not that into me, I don't want to stick around and give them the opportunity to say, mm, I'm not feeling you, can you just, like, go over there? So I'd kind of maybe sometimes even read between lines that aren't even there in the first place out of 
I don't know, 50-50, like, fear and protection, like, a defence. Like, I'm defending myself against a threat that isn't necessarily there, if you know what I mean. So, I've, like, just really been analysing myself, because I want to grow, I want to evolve, I want to move forward. So, I think it's really good to, like, take all my judgement and kind of point it within and kind of school myself if I want to grow like I have to I have to be my, my own mother I have to like I've got a daughter she's 18 months and I want to be there for her for her to talk to for her to grow to teach her to school her in certain things and because uh, my mum passed away I haven't got that so I have to be my own mother I have to look at myself sometimes in like an objective manner and be like, okay, I want the best for myself, and it's almost like a tough love that I have to give myself, and I have to really, um, not so much criticise, because it's all constructive criticism, really look at myself and find detail and think, okay, where, uh, what areas in my life am I insecure, what areas do I have anxiety, what areas do I have hang-ups, am I being arrogant sometimes, do I um, feed my ego a bit more than I should, I have to really look at myself and check check myself, I really do, because cause I'm like, um, I've had the habit of like isolating myself a lot, there's not a lot of people that are close enough to, are close enough to me to do that, to point out that, you know what, you're going on a bit funny like I haven't got that around me so I've kind of got to do it for myself so I've been looking up about my north node and my north node is an Aquarius if you want to look that up like it's <laughs> so deep so deep I don't even know like where to start getting into that but I always like to know myself better because if I find out what I'm meant to be doing, what my lessons, so-called lessons are that I need to learn, I can avoid going round in a continuous cycle of events and thinking, okay, why, why is this, why does this keep happening? I don't want to be living life like I'm in a recurring dream and I can't, can't get out of it. And every time I go back to sleep, I'm back in this dream that won't change. But I just think definitely looking inwards for me <laughs> that's that's really that's really helped me a lot like reflection because I'm a Virgo as well so I can be like very analytical and going through things with a fine tooth comb but I've found that it serves me best to kind of do that with myself and not other people at all because I have been in the past like judgmental of other people but especially like looking at astrology and looking at life purposes like you just it, you for me I can't judge anybody because I don't know one like I don't know where they're going what their goals are what they've been through like I've got I put my hands up and say like, I haven't got a clue what this person wants out of life so like there is nothing to judge them on really the only thing so I've naturally got that kind of judging energy, so I've just kind of uh, pull it inward. Because once I make myself the most, not perfect, but yeah, almost perfect, like I'm a Virgo, I'm going to use the word perfect. Don't hate me for it, but most I've perfected myself over time and I keep all polishing. Once I've polished myself <laughs> and keep refining, then I'm going to see that everything, everything can happen for a reason and I can get better and better. But I just know that I keep on having to reflect, go back, reflect, grow and just learn basically. Because if I'm not learning then it's pointless if I'm not looking back and seeing ways where I've made mistakes in the past. I want to grow, I want to change, I want to transform, that's just what I'm about so... I feel like I'm rambling a bit now. <laughs> I feel like I'm rambling a bit now, but I was actually going to talk about loads of childhood experiences, but we're just talking in general. 
I've got I've got my little not fix but I feel better. I feel like this has been an intimate conversation. So right, peace out. <laughs>